Hi, my name is Dr. Julie Lamb and I'm a physician at Pacific Northwest Fertility and IVF Specialist, a partner of Swedish Cancer Institute and the Women's Cancer Center at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. In this podcast, we'll discuss some options available to preserve fertility, who's a candidate for fertility preservation, and some post-treatment parenthood options. Cancer survival rates continue to improve. In fact, most women who have cancers during their reproductive years survive. Many of these women go on to desire to have children and to build families after completing cancer treatment. Furthermore, there are more fertility preservation and treatment options than ever before. We'll begin with a recent story from one of my patients. This is Rose. Just a few months ago, I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. I had never expected I would get cancer, especially not at age 25, and initially I was terrified. I remember leaving my doctor's office, and before I could even turn on the car, I just started sobbing. Suddenly, all of my life plans were in jeopardy, and that included my plans to have kids someday. I found out that some chemotherapy patients are unable to get pregnant naturally after treatment because their eggs are damaged. Thankfully, my doctor told me about egg freezing. I never thought I would need to go to a fertility clinic, but my experience was incredible. For weeks, I had been terrified that I might die from cancer, but Dr. Lamb filled me with hope as we planned for my future family. Suddenly, I had something positive to focus on. I talked to Dr. Lamb about how many children I wanted, and she counseled me through each ultrasound, hormone injection, and eventually the egg harvesting procedure. Having a family someday will be an amazing part of my life. Every time I visited Pacific Northwest Fertility, I was able to forget about cancer for a few hours and dream about the babies I was beginning to create even if they weren't actually born for a few years. Now that I've got my eggs frozen, I have the option to have a family after chemo. I think someday, when I have kids, I'll tell them that just as little eggs, they inspired me to beat cancer so that I could live on and be their mom. Thank you, Rose. Before we talk about each option, I want to briefly go over why cancer treatments compromise fertility. Whether cancer treatment includes surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation, or a combination of these, all of them can impact fertility. And the impact depends on the type of chemotherapy, it can depend on the dose of chemotherapy or radiation, and on the location of cancer in relation to your ovaries. It especially depends on the age at the time of your cancer treatment. A woman is born with a set number of eggs that last until menopause, and it's this finite pool of eggs that is depleted with advancing age. The reproductive window opens soon after a girl goes through puberty and then closes when the defined number of follicles remain. On average, this is about age 42. Women continue to have menses for another decade, but once they are out of this fertile period, it becomes much more difficult for them to conceive. So with the use of chemotherapeutic agents, many are toxic to the eggs, and the loss of eggs accelerates abruptly. If one assumes that a woman returns to a similar rate of fertility decline following cancer treatment, she will have a correspondingly shortened reproductive window. For instance, if a patient continues to have normal menses, her reproductive window might end at 27 instead of 42. In fact, many women, uh, for many women, chemotherapy will mark the end of the reproductive window. The well-established, most successful fertility preservation method is for a woman to undergo IVF cycle or in vitro fertilization prior to her chemotherapy with cryopreservation. This means freezing the embryos. During this process, the ovary is stimulated and the eggs are collected from the woman and then combined with the sperm from her partner. The resulting embryos are then frozen. When she's ready to have a baby, they can be thawed and then used to create a pregnancy after her cancer treatment is completed. The process usually takes about two weeks and it involves injectable medication and an egg collection procedure. In patients without a partner, a similar IVF process can be accomplished and the eggs are collected and frozen individually. In this case, years later when you want to thaw these eggs, they are then combined with the sperm. The embryo is then created and transferred into the uterus of the woman. Both of these options can be done even if the ovaries are no longer functioning after chemotherapy. Because the egg is the largest cell in the human body, it's very fragile. And it wasn't until recently that freezing eggs without the sperm was even an option. This has significantly limited the choices available for single patients undergoing cancer therapy. 
Although it's still an investigational technique, egg cryopreservation is now really accepted, viable option, and it allows the patient the option of building a family in the future. So for a woman who doesn't have time to do IVF prior to initiating cancer treatment or who has ever already gone through cancer treatment before listening to this podcast, it is sometimes possible to conceive on her own or with the help of fertility treatments using her own eggs. There are several tests that a fertility doctor can do to help someone determine whether um, her egg supply remains after treatment. For a woman um, who has a low egg supply or diminished ovarian reserve, or who has already experienced ovarian failure resulting from her cancer, there are a number of options for having children. These options involve using a donor egg. An anonymous donor can be matched closely to the cancer patient and ultimately chosen by you, um, or a known donor, such as a sister, cousin, or friend, can be chosen. These donated eggs are either fertilized with your partner's sperm or donor sperm and then implanted into your uterus. Chemotherapy can destroy ovaries, but it doesn't prevent you from carrying a child, having a healthy pregnancy, or delivering a healthy baby. Women have been building families this way successfully for years. So there are many options to preserve fertility before or pursue fertility after cancer treatment. Wherever you are in the process, at Pacific Northwest Fertility, we're happy to meet with you and find a treatment plan that works for you. We have a great team. We're able to call you back the same day. We're able to arrange clinic visit within a day or two and help you coordinate your care closely with your cancer team. It's really very important to individualize treatment options to your particular situation and goals. Knowledge is key, and making well-informed decisions about your reproductive health is a really important piece of whole person cancer therapy. Please let us know how we can help you achieve your goals. Thank you for listening to Plugged Into Your Health Cancer podcast series on fertility preservation. For more information, please contact Pacific Northwest Fertility and see our website or call us at 206-515-0000. Thanks.